Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here this week to teach in God's Word and it is, this is just awesome. God's Word is, uh, brings so much peace and so much joy in my life. Uh, and so this is just a privilege. I, I, I know I say it every time I teach, but it really is. And today we're continuing in the Made Perfect in Weakness series, you know, where we are learning to take in and put on the armor of God and and have that be our strength instead of our own. You know, humans are not supernatural, obviously. And, and so it doesn't it feel great to rely on the strength of a supernatural? I mean, even if you're just exploring this, if you consider that, right, if there is a God and he is huge and made the earth and the heavens and all these kinds of things, then surely he's powerful enough to uh, bring us peace. And if we can rely on his power and, and he wants us to, then surely we can feel stronger even when, um, you know, we seem not as, you know, uh, I don't know how to say it, not as uh, strong, <laughs> you know, if we don't feel like a Superman or a Wonder Woman or whatnot, that we can still actually feel like that crazy right because we got a supernatural god uh who is giving us strength oh, oh, love it love it so we can be made strong in our weakness right um and so that was uh, our theme verse in second corinthians and in uh you know uh verse nine uh, chapter 12 and in verse nine um, and then last week, Nancy, Pastor Nancy taught about the shield of faith. She's we're going through the armor of God and each part of the armor of God has a different, like I would say tool or weapon that we can use to, um, you know, fight the fiery darts of the enemy. Right. And, um, and, and what are those? Right. And Nancy meant, uh, taught about what they were. Uh, let's actually go to that verse first in, uh, Ephesians 6, 10, go to Ephesians. It's in the new Testament. Okay. Um, and in uh, chapter six, verse 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Ooh, hoo, hoo, the power of his might. Above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith is, you know, our believing in God's power and God's word and his might. Um, which you, me, will be able to quench, stop, dissolve, right? Um melt <laughs> all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And those fiery darts sure get us sometimes, right? And one of the ones that, oh man, the fiery uh, dart that in the enemy throws at us, um, not only harsh voices and all those things of our self-worth, but especially I want to talk about today is our, that fiery dart of our relationship with money. Yeah. I know, I know, it's so crazy. I was just watching uh, that episode of Friends where, you know, they were very uncomfortable talking about money, you know, who made enough and who didn't make a lot and, and you know, and why, you know, like people's worths were like, you know, compared and de depended on that. And it was uncomfortable, but they talked about it, right? Um, but guess what? God's word says so many great things about how we can have a better relationship with money and that there is freedom uh, and in uh, there's freedom to be had in this area, you know, which is our in our finances, our money, our careers, our jobs, that whole thing. Um, and it is a fiery dart that where we put so much value in our self-worth um, and, um, and and all of that in how much money we have, right? And or how much money we don't have. And so it is, I mean, I, I mean, just this past week, it's crazy in the past five days. Um, I was in a fellowship and every single person, including myself a little bit, uh, we, we shared that our fiery darts was about our jobs. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, every single person, the main fiery dart that they were experiencing was about their self worth and, um, and feeling weak, uh, and, and not empowered because of their jobs. Hello, this is crazy. This is the number one cause of divorce is money, right? And it's that love of money, um, and our, you know, funky relationship with it. 
uh, where we feel like that money is, you know, the the true way to happiness and comfort and contentment. And but it's so not true. I I don't know one person that you know that. It, that thinks money is the highest value that has an amazing, peaceful, awesome life. Not one person. And I've, and I've met some celebrities even, you know, and I mean, there's celebrities of course that I'm sure, uh, you know, believe in, you know, uh, you know, God's word and, you know, and that principle of, um, of, uh, you know, not, not having money be their whole, you know, identity or whatnot. But, but, the, but so far the ones that I've met, still like have like crap ton of money and yet it's still not enough and they're working away from their families and kids uh most of the time um i would say like 80 percent of the time and and i'm like why what why why keep going you know um but uh but i've seen it just not even in celebrities but even in people who um you know have a lot and uh, myself and, and my parents even like you know they they were they were they were well off actually i mean yes they struggled when i was a baby um but they but by the time i was like you know in middle school and throughout my teen years and my 20s they were doing well but you would have no idea i you know felt like a financial burden in my life um you know i grew up uh, you know, they sent me to, you know, private school, private Catholic school, and that was a lot of money. And I, you know, had a lot of medical bills and that was a lot of money. And it was told to me that I was a financial burden and, and that they had to work, you know, 19 hours a day in order to, wait, is that right? Yeah. 19 hours a day. They only closed their shop for five hours. They had to work 19 hours a day to provide for me and my brother. That's, that's the message we got is that, we were in well, me especially with the finance, uh, the medical bills, that we were a financial burden, and that they had to work that many hours. And my brother and I, we grew up latchkey kids, uh, meaning like we kind of like were home alone a lot by ourselves when we were little. Um, and and that's what the message was that that we just never had enough, which was total. <laughs> BS apparently as when I became an adult I found out oh we actually do have a lot but it was never enough you know um so that's that's hard on on kids you know to know that to think that you know because of them they never see their parents um and so I super um believe in uh what the word says about how we can relate to money and how it is not our everything so um and what can we do to relate better, <laughs> right? Um, and um, and so let's go to First Timothy. I love this verse. Um, verse six. First Timothy and chapter six and in verse uh, six actually. Chapter six, verse six. Timothy is in the back of your Bible. All right. Here's my Bible with the margins, uh, so I can write notes. Um, okay. It says, uh, now godliness with contentment is great gain. That sounds great, right? Contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. <laughs> I love it. It's saying that contentment to not need anything, right? That is really where we can find contentment, where we can find peace. And, um, and because we came into this world with nothing, right? We came as babies and like, do we have anything? No. Do we have anything material? No, nothing. We just come into the world with nothing, right? Guess what? We go out that way too. Even if we are multi-billionaires, we cannot take that money with us to the grave. Like it's worth nothing when we're dead, you know? Uh, I mean, like when we, if we try to take it with us, right? And, and it says having food and clothing, that's it. It doesn't even say having a roof shelter over your head. With these two things, food and clothing, we will be content. Oh my goodness. I mean, I don't know if I have faith that big <laughs> in terms of like not having, you know, somewhere like a roof over my head, um, but, but we can be. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, and you know, maybe just having food and clothing sounds weak, you know, sounds like it's not enough or nothing. But guess what? In God's word, it says, in, in, with these, we shall be content. 
that is amazing. I, I actually do really want to get there, you know, and I feel like I, I am there in a lot of ways, maybe not believing in the roof part, but God has provided for me um, and my husband and my family. And so um, I'm so thankful for that, you know, but we can, we could be content with just this. Um, and so, and, and, and I mean, I do believe, uh, and myself included, that most people think that if we have more money, then we're going to be more content. I, I know there comes some comforts and stuff like that, but true contentment where we don't have our attachment to money, that's way more powerful than having a trillion dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, <clears throat> and so... Let, let's keep going. Let's go to, uh, let's read in verse uh, 9, okay? First Timothy uh, chapter 6 and in verse 9, it says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So we're going to read later uh, about, or I don't know if I have it in here, so I'm going to say it now, but it says that, that it is not money itself that is evil, but the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Okay, so here it says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. In verse 10, it says, for the love of, oh, it's right here. Ha ha ha, we're going there. What is wrong with me? For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Oh man, so when we desire too much, you know, and our purpose and our worth is in this money, the love of it, right? Not having enough, the greed of it, right? Oh man, it's gonna, it's gonna lead to many sorrows. And I've seen it in, you know, lots of different, you know, people in myself, in my own life, right? In the lives of, uh, in the lives of my friends and my family, um, and <clears throat> and feeling crappy about ourselves because we don't have enough, you know, and and comparing ourselves, right? It it leads to many sorrows, like so much debt. Like I got into debt right after college because once I realized, you know, and this is me putting my head in the sand, right? Uh, one and and not really checking things for myself and just believing what my parents were saying. But once I realized that they uh, we're okay. <laughs> I suddenly felt all this resentment and bitterness for the message I got growing up that I was such a burden. So I just kind of went crazy and went very extreme and caught, you know, caught, got myself into a huge debt. Um, and that wasn't fun either. Like spending all that, but knowing I didn't have enough. Oh my goodness. It led to many sorrows, you know, and bad credit rating and all these kinds of, of things that, I did out of emotion, you know, out of hurt. Um, and, and it does, I got, I fell into temptation. I did many foolish things, you know, and I, and I just, you know, didn't depend on God. I just kept thinking that if I just have more stuff or if I have more, you know, other things <laughs> in college, have more fun, basically, then, um, you know, I would, I would feel fulfilled, but I always felt empty. You know what I mean? And it definitely pierced myself with many sorrows. Um, so uh, let's go to Matthew 6, um, 19. Matthew, just a few books back. Uh, la, 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 da, da. It's in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, okay. There we go. All right. So in Matthew, in chapter 6 and in verse 19, it says, Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth. Oh, okay. God's like, don't do it. <laughs> don't try to accumulate your treasures on earth, okay? Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Uh-huh. Uh, something always goes wrong. It's always taken away somehow, right? But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Will be also. And it's true, like, like, where do we lay ourselves treasures on earth? You know, where do we spend our money? You know, it says for where your treasure is there, your heart will also be also, right? And so think about where we spend our money in a lot of ways. Like, I, I know I've poured tons and tons of money into 
<laughs> into streaming services and <laughs> and cable TV. And when I think about it, I'm like, wow, I spend so much money a month, a month in that. And it brings me nothing. I, I, I put in a lot and it just brings me wasted time. And maybe sometimes my even my brain is not as believing God, <laughs> you know, and so um, it's true. And, you know, and so Oh, man, we want to focus. This whole teaching is about quenching those fiery darts and having our relationship with money be not about our attachment to that, but having God be our sufficiency. What? That's the shield of faith, believing that God is going to supply all of our needs and that when we do God's word, and uh that he god when we believe god is our proficiency our sufficiency and our everything like he can fulfill all of our needs not money guess what we're gonna find so much peace okay and we are really gonna get that we want to lay our treasures up in heaven you know meaning like we want to do what the godly things that bring us joy peace healing we want to do those things and have our value and worth in that versus money. Oh, it sounds so simple, right? But it's hard sometimes to get there, right? But guess what? Once you do it, there's, it's actually, actually it doesn't take that long. If, if you're a doer and it's like going to the gym, right? I, I bet, you know what? Actually doing, quenching this fiery dart with the field, shield of faith about money and our worth in it and our value in, and in it and all that stuff, that actually takes a lot. It can be a lot faster than um, going to work out and get, losing weight and becoming buff. 100%. I'm going to bet, bet my life on it. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, anyways, okay, let's keep reading in, uh, let's skip to verse 24, <clears throat> where uh, it says, no one can serve two maths masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Oh, we really, this is what I was just talking about. We really don't want our hearts attached to money. That fiery dart, that lie from the enemy that money is everything and if, if you have it, then you're going to be happy. That fiery dart is is not godly. It is about the world. It is about the enemy. And you, like, you can't serve God and mammon. You cannot, you know, those, it's, it's impossible. And so, hey, um, we get to decide. You know what's so great about all of this too? You know, I'm teaching about this and, you know, and I'm going to, you know, get more specific about how to find the financial freedom and your, and how to heal your relationship with money um is by giving you know we're gonna we're gonna we're getting to that but guess what all of these things that god's like hey try this do this do this, you know whatever this is for our benefit and we get to choose so it's totally up to you like you don't have to do anything uh god will still love you no matter what i 100 percent believe that god will love you he will try to fight for you but uh but if we're not open to it you know and if we're not like okay god help me Ah, it's not gonna. We're, God's not gonna overstep his, you know, the boundary and free will and force you to get financial freedom. Um, but, but this is really, this is why I love God's word, and this is why I love um, having a guide like His word. You know, um, so yes, let's talk about what happens um, and how we really can get financial freedom and quench those fiery darts with the shield of faith. <laughs> The shield of believing. Yeah. And it says in Malachi 3. Let's go to Malachi. It is, um, let's see, where is Malachi? Oops, Hosea. Yes, it is the last book of the, right before the Gospels. And uh, it says in uh, chapter 3 and in verse 10. three and verse 10 bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me in this says the lord of hosts and try me in this he's saying test me in this okay god doesn't say test him in any other place freely like this except 
in give, giving, okay? Um, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. Oh, yeah. sorry. This is hitting me right now a lot um, because I truly believe in it. And um, I, and it says bring all the tithes. I, I think people get kind of confused about, well, first let's just talk about what this says, right? It says, bring all the tithes. Tithes are the 10%, the first fruits of your harvest, which is, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, um, you know, uh, money and stuff like that was in the harvest, you know, uh, that's where all the value was. But it says, bring those 10% of that to, into the storehouse, you know, into my house, right? God's house. And try me in this, test me, bring the tithes, 10%, okay? Not just giving or offering, you know, anything, 10% and see if he will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. He's saying like, and you know, and I used to think that meant like, oh, if I give, then I'm gonna become rich, <laughs> right? Um, no, it's really that when we give, you know, and and, and I know God, um, and I know 10% sounds like a lot for, people who have a lot of money or make a lot of money or people who don't have a lot of money or don't make a lot of money 10% is a is is just a, just enough of a stretch that's like whoa you know and i think that's good because that helps us trust god and we can see bigger right it's like bigger risk uh bigger reward type of thing right like just in life concept or whatever but it's so true though like um i i believe in this because when i when i heard this principle um, you know, at first I was like, oh, okay. Um, you know, I didn't think I was going to be rich, but I did think I was going to get a lot of blessings, so to speak. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. But what it really did was because I was so, I felt like such a worthless person in the worldly sense, because I wasn't, didn't really have a job. I was just working at my parents' store and I felt like nothing. Um, I was so desperate to not feel that way anymore and not believe I really didn't want money to define me because I knew I was never going to make a lot of money. Um, and so I, I was like, okay, I, I don't want to think that my worth is attached to money. Right. And so, so when I came to searchlight and they talked about this and, and this is like, not like our church doesn't even like talk about it that much, like compared to other churches. Um, I was like, Oh, Oh, like, I don't have to feel like my worth is in my career or my job or money, then let me try this because God says, test me. And, and people in the church already who are in the fellowships who are already um, giving a lot, like even more, and people who had nothing, like people who didn't even have jobs either, you know? Like I remember thinking like, wow, they're still giving 10% even though they don't make that much. I was like, let me try it, you know? And, um, and so I did it, I started it because I was like, you know what? Like I was healed from, um, you know, resentment and anger and bitterness in, in a moment, right? And yeah, and there was other things that I was, you know, wanting healing from for sure, right? But I was like, I was like, let me just try this too because God did it in that part, you know? Like my heart is so happy and free and I love people. I don't hate people anymore and that feels free. So let me try this. And so I did and like, like yeah, I didn't become rich, <laughs> but my heart started changing. I started to really believe God was going to provide for me no matter what, even if I never got, you know, uh, like, uh, like a high paying job, you know, or became a, 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 a working actor making, you know, thousands of dollars, like an episode, like I never, even, even, even that, like I didn't, I really, my heart started to believe that God was really going to provide for me and, and he has, and he's not failed me since. And so I truly believe in it. Um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, and maybe, you know, you're not in that stage, that desperate stage yet, or your shield of faith, you know, isn't quite as strong, but it's actually giving is the easiest, most quickest, most active way of all the five things that, uh, help us to build our faith in, in our whole, you know, areas of every area of a life. But this one thing is sacrificial giving and serving our, our last S 
that is the thing that can be healed in a moment so fast. And I gotta tell you, one of my dear friends, you know, newer friends, Katie, and she has had gotten healing in this area in like, like within a month. <laughs> like I remember, you know, um, and truly believes that God is her proficiency and he has been providing for her and she can't believe it. And I'm like, I mean, she does believe it, but you know what I mean? That expression, I've seen it work every time it has happened in my life, uh, Chris's life, my husband. And we just actually, even like five days ago, we saw, we talked to our financial advisor and he was like, I don't know how you guys are doing it. You know, like, <clears throat> He's like, Chris can retire earlier and earlier, any you know, if he wants. And, um, and, and it's, it's just crazy. Like there's no worldly understanding of this. This is a godly supernatural thing that's happening here. Um, so, um, anyways, so, um, so if you want to try this, uh, you know, I'm going to do a, a challenge at the end of this teaching, but let's keep going because let's get more. There's more. Okay. There's more. Um, uh, but, but what I was saying was like, maybe you're not in that space, but guess what? You can, you can start with a stretch, you know, something that you know is a little uncomfortable, um, amount that where you can see God start to change your heart and start to, and, and, and our shield of faith becoming stronger, um, in believing God as our proficiency, okay, or our sufficiency. Um, so let's go to Luke uh, and in verse, uh, or chapter six. Woo, love that. I feel like God continues to open the storehouses, you know, and pour out a blessing I can't even receive. And it's not just about money, you know, it's definitely peaceful in that area, but just other things is amazing. So anyways, um, and woo, keep getting emotional about it. Um, and in uh, six, chapter six, in Luke chapter six, in verse 38, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will, uh, will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. This is how we want to live, man. Okay. Not like, do we want to live? You, we get to choose. Remember, do we want to live with an open hand where we can receive and um, or do we want to live with a, a tight, tight fist, you know, where you can't receive anything that it's so closed, um, and, uh, and you're barely getting by and, and it, and it feels stressful, you know, no, we want to have an open-handed kind of a way of relating to this. Um, and, and, and truly our heart and money connection. And one of the big, uh, part of our spiritual you know, fitness is in giving, is in honoring God with our finances. And so what I'm trying to get at is that we don't have to be attached to money. Um, all right. All right. So let's go to, this is a cool section of uh, the word. Um, it's really fun. Okay. So let's go to our next verse um, in Second Corinthians and in uh, chapter 9. I love this. Um, this is like another principle in the Bible that just works every time. It is a godly principle <laughs> and it is just the way we're designed, right? So in 2 Corinthians and in uh, chapter 9 and in verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully so let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity right not just like oh you know for god loves a cheerful and that word is actually translated as uh its definition is actually hilarious giver and god is in verse 8 it says and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance, an abundance for every good work. <laughs> this is going to make me cry too. Ah, so 
you know, going back to when I was just talking about tithing and maybe, you know, tithing is too much of a stretch, you know, um, but you, if you do do a stretch, this is the, this, the, that, that, get that, you know, um, um, thing, <laughs> uh, or principle, it, it applies in this. It says that if you sow sparingly, you're also going to reap sparingly. You're not going to be able to see because our hearts is like, oh, it's like, I'm just going to do a little bit. And so only a little bit's going to come back. You know what I mean? Meaning like your, your belief, you know, your, your faith building, it's not going to happen as fast as you want. You know, it's not, it's like, you know, it's like me with the working out. Oh, am I going to, you know, work out, uh, once a week for 30 minutes? Is that going to be, get me fa faster to my goal of uh, being stronger? I would think most people would be like, no, Susan, that's crazy. You know, you, it's going to take you 30 years or something. Maybe not. You might not even get there with that kind of stretch, <laughs> right? Not even a stretch really. But if I was working out, if I decide I'm like, okay, I'm going to work out five days a week for 45 minutes. Do you think that would make me be faster in getting to my goal? Oh, yeah, right? It's the same thing. Am I going to sacrifice or am I going to, you know, I'm going to do that, that, you know, uh, you know, sacrifice a couple of things so I can work out more days versus, you know, uh, just once a week, you know, uh, for 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, because do I want to get stronger, buffer sooner? Heck yeah. Who doesn't? Right. So, so this is that same principle, you know, and, and so, and, and God's like, Hey, like, like anything in, in that God says, right. It's our choice. We have free will. We do, we get to do it. We don't have to do it. We're not, you know, we're, like if we start to relate, like supposed to, and you know, Oh, like out of obligation or all that, you know, you know, then yeah. I mean, God will still bless you, but, but your heart's not going to be as free as it, it can be. You know, um, in turn, and, and God says, like, if you do this, you sow bountifully and reap bountifully and, and with cheerfulness, <laughs> right? Knowing that the joy that you're going to get from knowing and believing that God is your sufficiency. Look, this is what you're going to get. God is going to be able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, will ha may have an abundance for every good work. Oh, doesn't that sound way more fun? It's like you're going to get buffed so quick and you're just going to be even stronger than buff. You know what I mean? So we want our hearts to be the thing that changes. You know, like money will be money. It'll be there. It doesn't change. Money is always going to be money, right? But we can choose to change how we relate to it and choose to believe or uh, grow in our believing um, and make our shield of faith stronger uh, that God is our sufficiency. And I'm going to say it again. God is going to love you no matter what. Okay. No matter what. And, um, and so, um, so doesn't that sound exciting? Isn't that worth trying to be and feel and receive that way? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, there's so many more things I want to, I want to, so many more verses to go to so many examples of, uh, um, uh, of, of what God says about, you know, giving, you know, freely what you have freely received. And, um, and there's a woman, uh, with like, who had, who's so poor, had just like two little mites, you know, and, um, and she gives all of that to God, you know, at the temple, uh, when all these rich you know, people were like, oh, look at me. I'm going to give, you know, there's so many examples of what God says about uh, how we can find freedom uh, in our finances, you know, and how we relate to money. And, and I know this comes up a lot too, is, um, oh, okay, well, how to like give to God? What does that look like? And it's like, well, give to, you know, the fellowship um, where you get blessed where you are receiving so freely, right? You want to give there, there, um, because of course people are like, Oh, what about, you know, maybe I should just give to a charity or give to the homeless person directly. And yeah, please do that. Do that. That is kind that God, you know, um, wants us to, uh, take care of the widows and the poor and all that stuff, the hungry. Yeah. But this principle of giving to God, 
is an act of worship. And it is something that we get to do to say, God, we want to trust you in everything. We don't want to trust in this, you know? And, um, and yeah, I know. And, and so I, I, I give to other charities. Absolutely. I, you know, give to causes that I believe in, um, uh, you know, and, um, and, um, I'll give to, yeah, I'll give to like people who, who need it and, and my friends even and all that stuff. But that I don't give to that to me is I'm, I was like, but I'm going to give to God my tithe. You know what I mean? And, and because I want to, <laughs> I want to, it's an act of worship for me to say, God, you have truly blessed me. You and and I want to give to the to the community. Like, by the way, Searchlight doesn't need your money. Okay, we're not asking you guys to try this because we're like, oh, we need money to you know do this and that and whatever. No, that is not why we do it. Everybody on the leadership team is a volunteer, and uh, we and, and Nancy has said this many times in her teachings that we have one person, a lovely, lovely one of my besties. Uh, you know, she works as admin uh, because we need that. You know what I mean? But me, I'm a volunteer, um, and I spend like 90% of my time trying to spread God's love, right? Um, and I do this not because I'm getting paid, obviously. So we don't need that. You, you know, I know that. But I give to Searchlight because I'm like, I know where the money's going, right? We give to charities. We give to these, you know, uh, we pay for the production part, you know, so that you guys can see us <laughs> on YouTube uh, or whatever. Um, but that's it, you know, like, and I know, uh, I know Nancy said that she used to give to a church that was like, you know, one of, like there are, there are pastors and churches, uh, many good ones, but also some that, you know, use the offering money of their people, of their members, uh, to live a high life. You know what I mean? Like, well, maybe not the def the urban de definition of high life, but they do. They are, you know, flying around in jets. They have multi-million dollar homes. Uh, they have nice luxury cars, lots of things. There's even a church near me that I know that that kind of uh, money is being, you know, uh, spent. But but guess what? That they have to answer for their what they're doing. Uh, you know, in the you know when the Lord comes back, but. Um, but the people, God is still going to honor the people that have the heart to give to him. Okay. Like, I don't, like, even if I was giving to a crazy church or whatever, I know that God, um, is going to help me. It's, it's about like me and my relationship with money, not about the church, you know? So, but why wouldn't you, but, but to me, I'm like, I want to give though to, um, God through Searchlight because Searchlight has, it, my life has changed because of um, the people here uh, and what we do uh, and what they did for me and fought for me, not because they were getting paid, but because they loved with the love of God. And so like, what a great place where you know where your money's, your offering is gonna go. And also, um, and you're gonna find financial freedom in that, you know? Um, so the worst case scenario is you give to a community that, doesn't actually take a, take a salary, you know, um, and gives to the poor, you know? Um, so that's the worst that can happen, but you're going to have financial freedom. Come on. Isn't that worth it? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So I feel super passionate about this. Um, and, um, and so I, I am going to pray for you all, uh, to experience this and, um, and, and if you do decide to tithe, we're going to, I'm going to, um, so, but just, yeah, doesn't that sound amazing though, right? Like, um, like if you do stretch in this, whether you give 10% tithe or do an offering, uh, try a 90 day challenge. Um, uh, we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to do a 90 day challenge. And if you are in for that, you know, you're like, yes, I want to find financial freedom. And if that can happen or financial freedom and how we relate to money, and quench that fiery dart with that shield of believing, right? Shield of faith. Um, and you, uh, and that can happen in 90 days. What? I can't even get buff in 90 days, <laughs> right? So if you're up for that, please email info at searchlightfellowship.org and we will all pray for you or put it in the app. You know, there's our app in, uh, you know, the Searchlight Fellowship app 
in there, it says there's a, there's a place where you can ask for prayers. So maybe in that, if you, uh, don't want to remember the email address, <laughs> then go into your app and in the, in the prayer, um, prayer request, um, uh, area, um, put in that you are up for the 90 day challenge and that, and we will be praying for you and just see, I just can't wait to hear the stories of people feeling so free and less stress, um, and having more time and not having their value be in money and their careers and their jobs because it, because God is their sufficiency. Ah, your sufficiency. I can't wait to share that and share that in your fellowship. You know, anything you start to see God doing in this area. If you want to do, if you want something different, you got to try something different, right? Um, and so, um, um, so can you imagine that feeling like no stress or less stress, you know, and all that stuff after 90 days, you're never going to want to stop. You know what I mean? And God is going to be, and you're going to turn into that hilarious giver and you're going to be just so filled up and at peace. And so, um, I'm going to pray for you and, uh, thank you so much for being here and, um, and trying these things. And, um, I, I am so thankful for, uh, for you all. Um, anyways, um, heavenly father, I am truly amazed at your goodness and how amazingly mighty and powerful and loving you are your perfect love casts out fear god help us to really believe that in uh this next week as we um you know go about our weeks um and and um help us to stretch in this area help us to actually include you you know we can always pray and you know we can always be kind of you know like oh not sure yet but i want to try it that is being so open you know even if we're not like 100 percent all believing yet we i know we can get to that place um so quickly with your power and your might and your love and so help us to know that and believe that this week um and um and i thank you so much god for everyone here that is open to this um but also help us to uh, and and i know you're going to continue to pour out the blessings um and the peace and the joy and the love and the healing uh to those that you know are hilarious givers already um but i know that you are going to love us no matter what even if we don't do any of this um, even if we don't believe, um, you are still going to love us no matter what, but help us to really build our, our, our shield of faith to be bigger, uh, and, and quench those fiery darts of the enemy. Uh, and I thank you so much in your son's name, our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. Amen. And I didn't get to read the stretch goal, but read it in your fellowship. And there are, um, five meditations, um, on, you know, how we can uh, soften our hearts and, and, and grow in our believing in our uh for our giving and stuff like that so um i can't wait for you guys to try that and uh, we'll see you next week wasn't that great yeah i knew that it would be inspiring and that would also touch your heart well you know one thing that i also wanted to just share a little bit about is that at surfside fellowship we're really big about wanting to make an impact in the world around us. One thing you may or may not know is that Search Eye Fellowship is a remote church. So we'll meet in people's homes like you're getting to enjoy today, or maybe you're joining in through Zoom as well. So what that means is that there's, there's no building that we're paying rent for, so we can throw not throw, but we can actually use our resources to give without hesitation. So I just want to share a few of the ways that you're getting to make an impact by just doing an offering or even a tithe today. So at Search at Fellowship, we've been able to donate to places like the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. They have 26 emergency pop-up pantries and they feed 50,000 families weekly. That's huge. Another place would be Orphan Life Foundation. They help pro to provide adoption services for abandoned children, as well as healthcare and education. Those are some of the things that we're getting to impact today. There's a whole list of them, but also more importantly, we think about it for you, what it does for you. What does the Bible talk about when it says give, uh, talks about giving and offering? Well, we believe that giving act to God is actually a way of worshiping him. That actually is what the Bible talks about. It's also a way of putting him first in the area of your finances. So you get to grow in that every single week as well. And if you wanna to grow to the place where you wanna even do tithing, for example, that's giving 10%. God talks about, hey, but that when we tithe, that he'll open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing so enormous that there shall not be enough room to receive it. 
It's just you trying him in this. That's what he says. Try me now in this. It's not him testing you, but it's you testing him. So he encourages it as well. And we want to make that as simple as possible for you to try him now in this. You can scan the code that's popping up on your screen right now with your mobile device. You can jump into the mobile app as well under the heart section. Or if you want to jump online, search fellowship.org under the giving section, which is what it looks like right behind me. Three simple ways to give, to grow your faith. You can do this every week as well and see God work just really amazing things in your life. And again, it's really as simple as you trying him now in this. So enjoy your fellowship time, guys. Many blessings and we love you all. Thank you.